Yes, a very good evening to all of you. Right, so I hope all of you are able to hear me. Kaise ho aap sab log? Yes. So, yes, kya discuss kiya jaye aaj audit mein? Kaise tayari? How is your preparations for the exams going on? Right, so koi agar inter ke student, uh, final ke student ne bhi agar join kar liya hai, to koi aisa ye nahi hai, kyunki hum log... Uh, और एंगेजमेंट लेटर एंड ऑडिट रिपोर्ट डिस्कस करने वाले हैं सो इट इज गोइंग टू बी समथिंग कॉमन फॉर बोथ फॉर द इंटर एज वेल एज दी फाइनल स्टूडेंट्स ऑफ इयर ओके राइट जस्ट इफ समबडी कुड कंफर्म शेड्यूल फॉर सीए फाइनल ओके यू आर आस्किंग मी द शेड्यूल फॉर सीए फाइनल राइट सो इन सीए फाइनल वी विल बी कवरिंग टॉपिक्स लाइक वन द स्टैंडर्ड्स एंड देन द एथिक्स कारो क्लॉजेस पार्ट ऑफ इट एंड देन सम स्पेशल चैप्टर्स ओवर देयर सो दैट्स द प्लान फॉर सीए फाइनल इस माय वॉइस इज लाउड एंड क्लियर सो दैट्स ग्रेट ग्रेट टू सी यू ऑल ओवर योर आल्सो सो लेट्स मेक द बेस्ट ऑफ दिस टाइम एंड रादर देन मेंशनिंग अबाउट एनीथिंग एल्स लेट मी डायरेक्टली हिट ऑन टू द सब्जेक्ट Right, so today I have planned to discuss with you. We can look into a few correct and correct MCQ, but that can come in the later part of our discussion. Right now, we will first look into the engagement letter and the auditor's report. Okay, so it is not for English students. No, it is for English students. But I want actually, you know, the rest of India also to understand. Okay, English. I speaking in English or Hindi is not important, you know, because the paper. So we have to write it in English only. So, anyways. Now let's get on to the topic. Even though if I speak anything in uh, Hindi here and there, I will translate it into English. But the content will be in English only. So, जो भी Hindi का expectation भी रख रहा है student, तो आप भी सुन लीजिए मेरी बात. मैं क्या बोलना चाहती हूँ? और ऐसी गलत फैमी मत रखना कि ये RT मैम को Hindi नहीं आती है. मुझे आती है, पर यार paper तो तुमको English में लिखना है ना? You have to write the paper in English, right? Okay, right. So let's come to essay two one zero, which is regarding the agreeing the terms of the audit engagement, which talks about the engagement letter, which is to be issued by the auditor to the management, to the board of directors, to the those charged with governance of a company, right? So the client, the shareholders, they appoint the auditor, they issue the appointment letter to the auditor, and then the auditor has to accept the appointment, which has been done by the members of the Company and he has to put across his terms and conditions over there. Right, so putting across the terms and conditions of the engagement, the auditor issues the engagement letter. In this engagement letter, the auditor mentions something called as the premise, the presumptions, the assumptions on which an audit is conducted. Like you know, auditor says, "Oh, says." Only if you accept these conditions, only then I am coming for the audit. Otherwise, I am not coming for the audit. Right? So that is called as the preconditions for an audit. You can call it as the premise, assumptions, presumptions. Okay, this is a question for CA final also, CA inter also. I am discussing the auditing standard right now, engagement letter and audit report. So which is going to be relevant for both CA final also and inter also. But mainly my focus today is on the inter knockout series. Okay. Right. So what are the preconditions? Conditions for an audit. So, yes, preparation, presentation of financial statements is whose responsibility? It is the responsibility of the management, right? It is the responsibility of the management. But what AFRF, what applicable financial reporting framework is being used by the management for the preparation of the financial statements? Is that acceptable to the auditor? That is the first precondition of the auditor. What is the first precondition? The acceptability. of the frf the financial reporting framework where the management is using the accounting standards in the accounting standards the indas plus schedule 3 to the companies act yes then that would be an acceptable afrf to the auditor if the afrf is only not acceptable then no further talking about doing the audit or you know proceeding further with the engagement so number one requirement is the acceptability of the afrf that whether the afrf which is being used by the management in the preparation of financial statements whether that is acceptable to the auditor 
Yes, and once the AFRF is acceptable, then after that, auditor says, management, you please understand that the following are your responsibilities, right? So, what are the responsibilities of the management for the preparation of financial statements? So, preparation of financial statements in accordance with the acceptable AFRF, whose responsibility? Management, your responsibility. So, what was the first major precondition? The acceptability of the AFRF, right? The acceptability of the AFRF, the Applicable Financial Reporting Framework. What are we talking about? SA210, in which we are discussing the preconditions for an audit. And once the AFRF is acceptable, then after that we say that preparation and presentation of financial statements in accordance with the AFRF, whose responsibility? It is the management's responsibility. It is the responsibility of the management. Then internal controls in the organization. Does anybody know the definition of internal control? You have a full chapter in inter audit regarding, you know, uh, risk assessment and internal control. CA final also you have discussions regarding internal control, internal audit, management, operational audit. Right. So do you know regarding the definition of internal control? If I just, you know, randomly tell you the term internal control. Do you know the definition of that? Right? It is the policies and procedures which have been designed, implemented, maintained by management, those charged with governance and other person within the organization to obtain reasonable assurance about the achievement of the entity objective and what objectives the entity wants to achieve from the internal control. They want to achieve one, the reliability of the financial reporting. Right? So, one objective of internal control is what? The reliability of the financial reporting. Right. Then after that, what does it say? The efficiency and effectiveness of the operations. Right. Smooth conduct of the operation. So, we have the efficiency and the effectiveness of the conduct of the operations. Then after that, the safeguarding of the assets. Right. There should be the safeguarding of the assets. And the last one is what? It should ensure compliance with the applicable laws and regulations. Right. So, compliance with the laws and regulations, the applicable laws and regulations. Right. So, one, we have definition of IFC. That is internal financial control. Right now, I am talking to you about the definition of the I internal control. That is only the IC. So, why there should be internal control in order to ensure the reliability of financial reporting so that there is no fraudulent financial reporting, what we study in SA 240. Then there is smooth conduct of the operation, efficiency, effectiveness of the operation, no misappropriation of the asset. That means there is the safeguarding of the asset and in order to ensure compliance with the applicable laws and regulations. Okay. That's so anyways, these internal control, whose responsibility? Management? Management? Your responsibility is so obvious. Whose responsibility? It is the responsibility of the management. Auditor is like the king, you know. Right. So then auditor will say, I'm going to come for the audit. And when I come for the audit, you will give me all the information, right, which is required, which the management has in relation to the preparation of the financial statements. Right. So all information in relation to the audit. Right. Then any additional information which could be asked by the auditor, requested by the auditor from the management or the those charged with governance. And last but not the least, the unrestricted access to persons within the entity from whom the auditor considers it necessary to obtain the audit evidence. Right. So what are these? These are the preconditions for an audit. What are these? These are the preconditions for an audit. One precondition, the acceptability of the AFRF and then you have these five other preconditions over there. Okay, right. Then after, so in my engagement letter, 100% I have to mention the preconditions for an audit. And then, in the, so that has to come under the principal contents of the engagement letter. 
right so what are the principal contents of the engagement letter the objective and scope of the audit okay what is the purpose of this audit the responsibilities of the auditor i hope all of you know the responsibilities of the auditor to obtain reasonable assurance that financial statements are free from material misstatement whether due to fraud or error thereby enabling the auditor to express an opinion whether financial statements have been prepared in accordance with the afrs okay right then the responsibilities of the management the identification of the afrf so these two points are nothing but the preconditions for an audit and last but not the least in my engagement letter itself we have to give the expected form and content of the report we have to give the expected form and content of the report right so what are these these are the principal contents of the audit engagement letter these are the principal contents of the audit engagement letter okay now in my engagement letter have i written the preconditions Okay, to provide the auditor with all information, to provide the auditor with additional information, unrestricted access and all of that. Okay, and now management is telling auditor, you come for the audit, we will give you all the information, but only inventory, we will not be able to give you the information. Now, this is again a super favorite area, which all of you at inter and final should be knowing about, which is the term called as the limitation on scope. And they are limiting the scope. What is my scope of the audit? To do the audit of the entire financial statements for 31st March 2026 or whichever is the financial year. And now what they are telling auditor, inventory, don't check. Auditor, property plant equipment, don't check. Auditor says, what is this? You're not allowing me to check. So there is a limitation on scope which has been imposed on the auditor. So one, you need to understand okay, what is the reason? Okay, why are they imposing a limitation on scope? Why are they limitation? Why are they allow limitation? Right? Is there any, you know, change in the circumstances that there is a lockdown and because of that auditor, you cannot go and attend the inventory count or the inventory has been lost due to fire. What has happened? Right? The circumstances. Then whether there is any misunderstanding, right? So again, the misunderstanding in terms of the understanding of the terms of the engagement. Okay, you know, they thought that, oh, auditor will come, he will prepare financial statements. But no, auditor doesn't come to prepare your financial statements. He comes to audit them. And also whether there is any misunderstanding or whether there is any restriction on scope, whether management has imposed any limitation. They say, SA505, there is a favorite question. Auditor, not to send confirmation request to a group of debtor. Auditor, not to send confirmation request to a group of creditor. So then you say, Are why? Whatever it is. You know, so it's a restriction on scope. It's a limitation on scope which has been imposed by the management. Okay. Right. So you understand the reasons. Okay. Why management is imposing a limitation on scope. Once you understand the reason, what you can sensibly do, you can request the management to remove the limitation. Request management, that management, whatever is the limitation on scope, please remove it if possible. Let us do the checking, whatever we can do. Right. If they say, no, you, we, we will not remove the limitation. Then the auditor, he's so peaceful and so calm. He says, okay, I will try to perform the alternative audit procedure. Like, you know, if not by hook, by crook. You know? So alternative audit procedures. All of you, listen to me. Sit straight. Whatever I'm discussing with you, very, very important. Right? Are you all looking at the screen? Or am I on the screen and you elsewhere here and they're roaming around? Thank God, at least you, you know, thought that, okay, there is something on YouTube today and you came on the uh, YouTube channel for that. Yes, okay. Right? So, alternative audit procedures. If you are there attending, then attend it seriously. Don't waste your time. Your time is very, very precious right now. That's what I want to tell you. Right? So, alternative audit procedures. Why alternative audit procedures? Because auditor wants only one thing. He wants moksha. No, 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 no. He doesn't want any what you say, or moksha or anything. He wants the sufficient, appropriate audit evidence. So request the management to remove the limitation. If not, you perform the alternative audit procedure. You inspect the documentation regarding the movement of goods. You check the inventory register. You check the goods inward register, good outward register, right? So you check the contract, what you say, the documents which are shared with the subcontractor, right? So some is it the supplier or something. So some alternative procedures you perform, right? Some 
alternative audit procedures to obtain the evidence but now what is happening even by performing the alternative audit procedure aha uh -huh, even after performing the alternative audit procedure aha uh aha -huh, uh -huh, means what unable to obtain a sufficient appropriate audit evidence unable disclaimer are wait no why you are becoming so hyper disclaimer okay unable to obtain the sufficient appropriate audit evidence so the, now in that case what you will do one you may either if it is material but not pervasive you will issue a qualified opinion saying that financial statements give a true and fair view except for the possible effect of right the matters described in the basis for qualified opinion paragraph and in case if the matter is material and pervasive then auditor you one either you can issue a disclaimer of opinion ke we are not in a position and we do not express an opinion on the financial statements or second auditor if you don't want to give a disclaimer or client is not okay with you issuing a disclaimer of opinion when you shared the draft report with them what you can do you may also decide to withdraw from the engagement right withdraw from the engagement is nothing but the resignation of the company auditor and now if it's a company audit that i am doing and i am deciding to withdraw from the engagement that means it's the resignation of the company auditor and if the auditor resigns then what do we need to do company law what is the legal requirement okay within 30 days from the date of the resignation within 30 days from the date of the resignation the auditor needs to file the form adt 3 with the company and with the roc that is the registrar of companies and in case if it's a government company in addition to company and roc you also need to file it with the c and ag that is the comptroller and auditor general of india right what if the auditor does not file this adt 3 within 30 days from the date of resignation right what if he does not file it you know that then tell me if you know it within 30 days from the date of resignation the auditor did not file the form adt 3 with company roc or in case of a government company also with the c and ag then what fine what does fine okay right how much Fifty thousand rupees or the remuneration of the auditor, whichever is less, and five hundred rupees per day of continuing default, subject to a maximum of two lakh rupees. Perfect. Right? If the auditor does not file the ADT three, okay. If auditor withdraws from the engagement, will there be any penalty even to if he has to even though he has to file the form? Right. So that is the penalty. Five. Fifty thousand or the remuneration of the auditor, whichever is less, and five hundred rupees per day of default, subject to a maximum of two lakh rupees. Okay, right. So that is regarding. So see how we start with you know SA two one zero, where there is you know scope of audit, and that there is a limitation of scope. Then we try to understand that क्या है reason why there is a limitation of scope. Then ultimately, if we say we are unable to obtain evidence, then we go to SA seven zero. Five. What is seven zero five? Modifications to the opinion in the independent audit report, in which we either decide to issue the qualified opinion or the disclaimer of opinion. Auditor, you can issue disclaimer, or you may decide to withdraw from the engagement. And whatever you decide to do, you also need to communicate it to those charged with governance. And withdrawal is nothing but the resignation of the auditor. Okay, right. So that is one more question over there regarding the limitation on scope. Right, that's the question regarding the acceptance of a change in the engagement. Right, there is an acceptance of the change in the engagement. Right. So now, what does it say? The new terms of engagement. In order to avoid confusion, there is a revision in the terms of engagement. What does it say? The new report. What does it say? If there is a reasonable justification, or there is no reasonable justification to accept the change in terms of engagement. If there is a reasonable The justification an auditor is going to issue a new report. In this new report, he should not make a reference to the original engagement or any procedures that were performed in the original engagement. Right. So when they make an MCQ in the exam, they make an MCQ on whether between these two there is a or or there is an and. Right. So there is an or over there. There is not an and over there. 
okay right so that's the question regarding the limitation on scope then another favorite question of icai is regarding the recurring audit right so as such what does the standard say that in case of a recurring audit auditor no need for you to send a new engagement letter but there are circumstances which warrant the auditor to send a new engagement letter in case of a recurring audit so last year also i did audit this year also i am doing the audit as such not required to send a new engagement letter but then there are the circumstances which say ke auditor old engagement letter will not do you will have to send a new engagement letter when will auditor have to send a new engagement letter one when there is a change in the management right there is a change in the management so the original management to whom i issued engagement letter and now who is the management of the company there is a change right so change in the management or there is a change in the ownership right new owners have come into the company or there is a change in the nature or size of the entity business so there is change in the nature like earlier it was a textile company now it has become a real estate company so there is a change in the nature or size of the entity business right there is a change in the laws and regulations which are applicable to the entity there is a change in the afrf right there is a change in the other reporting requirement there is a change in the terms of engagement those of you who are listening to me very very vigilantly and very carefully did you notice one word which is constantly coming over there kuch suna tumne aisa jo fir se aa raha hai wahan pe मैनेजमेंट ओनरशिप नेचर और साइज लीगल रेगुलेटरी रिक्वायरमेंट फाइनेंशियल रिपोर्टिंग फ्रेमवर्क अदर रिपोर्टिंग रिक्वायरमेंट वॉट इज इट एवरीवेयर वॉट एम आई टॉकिंग अबाउट दैट वेदर देर इज एनी देर इज एनी change exactly right so whether whenever there is any change you have to issue the new engagement letter exactly perfect right or where there is any misunderstanding with the client as to the objective and scope of the audit wherever there is any misunderstanding with the client as to the objective and scope of the audit right so those are the situations where in case of a recurring audit you have to send a new engagement letter okay and then we have one draft format of the engagement letter over there okay. okay right so that's engagement letter the first document which we issue in the audit and the last document which we issue in the audit is the audit report right the last document which we issue in the audit is the audit report so in order to issue an audit report we first need to form an opinion and once we form an opinion then we need to report on the financial statements so forming an opinion and reporting on the financial statements right for forming an opinion what you need to check whether you have obtained the yes exactly the reasonable assurance that financial statements are free from material misstatement and financial statements have been prepared in accordance with the afrf so in simple language when i have to form an opinion i need to check whether the overall objectives of the auditor in sa 200 have they been achieved or not have they been achieved or not the overall objectives of the auditor and once i say yes yes auditor you have achieved your overall objective you are a very good auditor then what to do unmodified opinion unmodified opinion clean report true and fair view prepared in accordance with the afrf no material misstatement no material fraud and error that is what unmodified opinion right so 700 talks about that and the modified opinion am i right okay and what if auditor needs to modify his opinion yes modify then say 700 is only for unmodified if you want to modify you need to go to sa 705 what is 705 modifications to the opinion in the independent auditors report right the modifications to the opinion in the independent auditors report okay right so first let us look into okay what are the basic elements of the audit report as per sa 700 are you all with me right let's have a quick revision of what are the basic elements and sometimes i can add an emphasis of matter other matter key audit matter that other information of 720 those are additional points which may come in my audit report but the basic elements in my audit report is what we discuss right now so basic elements in the auditor's report are you with me is the notebook in front of you is the screen in front of you 
Okay. Right. So, what should be the first element of the audit report? What can you think about it? Yes. Any guess? You say, ma'am, no guess. We know it confidently that the first element of the audit report is the title. Right. What is the title? It is the independent auditor's report. What is the title to the audit report? Everybody, please tell it with me. It is the independent auditor's report. Okay. Right. Independent auditor's report. To whom? Right. So, you need to have the addressee in your report. Right. So, you need to address your report generally to the members of the company. Sometimes you could also address it to the CNAG in case of a government company or you can address it to the board of directors in case of the consolidated financial statements and so on. But generally, our audit report is addressed to the members of the company. Okay. So, title addressee. Yes. What next? What next? Nothing next? Yes, what would be the next element of the audit report? Title, addressing, done, 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 done. What after that? Right, we have the opinion paragraph. So, title, addressing, an auditor says, first listen to my opinion, then your responsibility, my responsibility, that will come later. But first, let me give you the opinion. Right, so opinion. Now, in the opinion, you can't directly say true and fair, not true and fair. First, what you need to do, you need to give an introduction. So, in the opinion, you first have an intro para. Right, in the intro para, we have the five points over there. What do we write? Do you remember? Can you visualize, bring in front of your eyes any audit report? Yes, type independent auditor's report to the members of Reliance Industries Limited opinion. Then what does it say? We have audited the accompanying standalone financial statements of Reliance Industries Limited, which comprise the balance sheet. Well, as at 31st March 2027, whichever be the year, the statement of profit and loss, the cash flow statement, right? Then the statement of changes in equity and the summary of the significant accounting policies and the other explanatory information, right? So basically, all of you don't listen to me as if you are listening to something for the first time. Knockout. This is final, done and dusted. Are you understanding? We are doing the, we are just checking that whether you already know this. Okay, don't listen to me as if it's for the first time. Okay, right. So, first one, the name of the entity. So, Reliance Industries Limited. Then the fact that you are conducting an audit and you're not doing a review, you're doing the audit of the historical financial information. Right, then after that, what does it say? The title of each financial statement that is the balance sheet statement of profit and loss cash flow statement soce that is statement of changes in equity right then after that the summary of the significant accounting policies and the other explanatory information so that is your notes to account and a more popularly known as the notes to account and then after that we have the date or period covered so for the year ended 31st march 2027 whatever is the year for which you are doing the audit Right, so opinion paragraph. Okay, right. So title, address, the opinion. In the opinion, we start with the introduction. In the introduction, we start with we have audited. Hello, we have audited. Okay, and then you express your opinion. What opinion do you express? That whether the financial statements give a true and fair view of the state of affairs, of the profit or loss, the cash flows, the changes in equity of the entity for the year ended on that date. Right. So, title, address the opinion. Then after the opinion, which is the next para? Okay. Right. So, for CA final, we will be discussing more different content. But if you are into CA final also, no worries. This lecture is relevant for you also. Okay. Right. So, title, address the opinion. After opinion, you express opinion. But then what is the what is the correct? What is the basis for your opinion? So, basis for opinion paragraph. Okay, on what basis are you saying true and fair? So, you say that we have conducted our audit in accordance with the standards on auditing specified under section 143.10 of the Companies Act 2013. Right? So, you see, we don't do the audit as we wish that I came and then I thought this is how I should do audit and that's how I did. No. How we did our audit in accordance with the standards on auditing specified under section 143 subsection 10. Then in the 
basis for opinion section in the audit report you make a reference to that section of the audit report where the auditor's responsibility have been given so here you don't write down the auditor's responsibility here in this paragraph of the audit report you make a reference to that section of the audit report where the responsibilities of the auditor have been given right so refer to the auditor's reference to the auditor's responsibility paragraph then auditor says that when i am doing the audit i comply with the ethical requirements do you know the ethical requirements and then there are so many side questions now which come in between we say internal control and then we discuss definition of internal control so now when we have the uh, what do you say ethical requirements immediately mind says okay what is ethical requirement over there right so ethical requirements those being integrity that is straightforward honest and sincere then you have the objectivity that is unbiased no conflict of interest right then after that you have the professional competence and the due care right so competent in performing his duties and also does his work with the due diligence right due care okay right then after that confidentiality to maintain the confidentiality of the client data not to disclose the secrets of the client right and then last one is what the professional behavior to avoid any behavior which might bring the discredit to the profession right to avoid any behavior which would bring the discredit to the profession right so ethical requirements including the independence does anybody know the two types of independence the auditor needs to maintain which two types of independence auditor you need to maintain independence yes in what i know for myself that i am independent but is it enough if i know it for myself that i am independent no even a reasonable and informed third party should be of the opinion ki yes this fellow this auditor he is independent so that means we are talking about the code of ethics talks about independence in two ways one independence of the mind and second the independence of the appearance right so you say it's my state of mind i know i am independent are but only you knowing is not enough the world should also be saying that yeah yeah this auditor is independent you understand no right so independence of mind and independence in the appearance both of the independence are required to be ensured by the auditor right so independence of mind is the state of mind which ensures that the auditor maintains his integrity objectivity and the professional skepticism and independence of appearance the avoidance of any such facts and circumstances right which may lead a third party to a conclusion that the auditor's integrity objectivity or professional skepticism is getting compromised like you know rotation of company auditor why did it come because it's the same auditor doing audit for 40 years it doesn't look like he's independent he's so familiar with the client there are familiarity threat you get it familiarity threat to the independence of the auditor so in that case you said so what if it is 40 years old i am still independent and if that is only independence of mind and appearance it is not and what does the code of ethics require not only the independence of the mind but also the independence in the appearance okay right then what is the next point basis for opinion paragraph we do our audit as per the auditing standards then you make a reference to that section of the audit report where the responsibilities of the auditor have been given then you say that we comply with the ethical requirements including the independence and last one auditor says we believe what does the auditor believe that the audit evidence we have obtained is sufficient and appropriate we believe that the audit evidence we have obtained is sufficient and appropriate to provide a basis for our audit opinion so sufficient appropriate audit evidence what am i discussing with all of you the basic elements of the auditor's report what was element element number 1 title element number 2 address e 3 opinion for basis for opinion right then after basis for opinion paragraph you have two more over there but these two will not always come they may or may not come see title address the opinion basis for opinion these 
contents will always come in your audit report but the next two which i am mentioning going concern whenever there is a material uncertainty related to going concern as per sa 570 then this para will come you know whenever there is a material uncertainty related to the going concern so if there is no material uncertainty regarding going concern then this para will not come okay right then after that what the what is material uncertainty any events or conditions due to which you have a significant doubt about the entity's ability to continue as a going concern you wonder now how this company will have a future i don't see thing i don't see they have a foreseeable future or so right so going concern if any so if there is any concern regarding the going concern of the concern then that concern you have to write in your report Concern, 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 concern. Did you understand? If there is any going concern regarding the concern, right, of the concern which you are auditing. Okay, anyways, don't worry, but don't get concerned. Right, so going concern. And then after that, array not KMP, re. KMP is key managerial personnel, not that. Here it is CAM, key audit matter. Let me see how many of you know the definition. Now, every audit report, will there be key audit matter? No, there may or may not be. But whenever you issue qualified or adverse, there will always be a key audit matter. Disclaimer, there will never be a key audit matter. Because for the fact that you are issuing qualified or adverse opinion, that itself is a key audit matter. There might be other key audit matters or there might not be the other key audit matters. Okay, what is key audit matter? CAM, yes, key, so these two are visiting paragraphs. They may or may not come in the audit report, right? Going concern key audit matter. What is key audit matter? Key audit matters are matters. Which matters? Key audit matters are, right? So this was regarding independence. Now I'm talking to you about the CAM, the key audit matters. Key audit matters are those matters that in the auditor's professional judgment, so auditor's thought processes, auditor's professional judgment are of most significance. So this is the most significant term for SA 701, most significance in the audit of the financial statements of the current period. Key audit matters are those matters that in the auditor's professional judgment are of mover of most significance in the audit of the financial statements of the current period and key audit matters are selected from the matters communicated to tcwg key audit matters are selected from the matters communicated to the tcwg okay so key audit matter okay because i am discussing key audit matter let me take up one more question over there because this is again a very favorite question of ICAI. Okay, how do you determine that a particular matter is a key audit matter? It's not a normal matter. How do you determine? Determining key audit matters? How do you determine boss? This is not like just any other matter. Okay, this is a key audit matter. How do you determine that? Okay, ye to key audit matter. This is not a key audit matter. This is a big matter. Don't mind my Hindi for some time, okay, because I want the uh, Hindi speaking or Hindi, what you say, students who are comfortable with Hindi also to be connected with me in the class. Okay, right? Key audit matters. How do you say okay, this is a big, big matter? This is not a regular matter. Yes, when it's an area of the higher assessed RMM, correct, risk of material misstatement higher assessed risk of material misstatement or where there is a significant risk and those rmm in the audit risks of material misstatement that require the special audit consideration right so higher assessed rmm or significant risk right then what does it say right then after the higher assessed rmm what is the other area significant auditor judgment has been involved in evaluating that that particular matter. So say like a litigation going on against the company of 1000 crore rupees, an auditor had to apply huge amount of judgment. 
when an auditor had to apply the huge amount of judgment in checking whether this matter is it appropriately reflected, whether it is properly disclosed in the notes to account or so. Right? So significant auditor judgment has been involved, including evaluating the management judgment. Right? Then what does it say? Every audit that doesn't happen, but this year the company came up with an IPO. This year the company did the capitalization of some plant. So significant event or transaction that took place due during the period right so amalgamation happened merger happened demerger happened and so significant event or transaction that took place during the period so if any of these three then you say boss this is not a normal matter this is a this is a key audit matter then this is a key audit matter so one what is the definition of key audit matters key audit matters are those matters that in the auditor's professional judgment are of most significance in the audit of the financial statements of the current period hello and now, how do you determine that a particular matter is a key audit matter? Areas of higher assessed RMM or the significant risk. Then what do we say? Significant auditor judgment or the significant event or transaction that took place during the period. Anyways, let's go back to what we were discussing. We were discussing what? The basic elements of the audit report. In between, we just go left, right, again, come back on the center track. Again, left, right, again, come back on the center track. Right. So, anyways, title, addressing, opinion, basis for opinion, going concern, key audit matters, if any. Okay. Right. Then, after that, the next element of the audit report is the management's responsibility. Right? So, preparation, presentation of financial statements, internal controls in the organization, management, your responsibility. Right? So, we mentioned in the audit report regarding the management's responsibilities. Then, after the management's responsibility, we mentioned about our auditor's responsibility. What is our auditor's responsibility? To obtain the Yes, reasonable assurance. What is the objective of the audit? What is the responsibility of the auditor to obtain the reasonable assurance that financial statements are free from material misstatement, whether due to fraud or error, right? So, reasonable assurance, right? Then after the reasonable assurance, you have the other reporting responsibilities. What are the other reporting responsibilities? Caro. You know, like 143 subsection 11, then 143 subsection 3, duty as to reporting. You know, whether auditor he has obtained information and explanation, whether proper books of account as required by law, whether branch audit report have they been forwarded to the company auditor, whether balance sheet profit and loss account are they in agreement with the books of account, whether financial statements comply with the AS, yes, the, you know, the financial statements, the AS, then whether any observations or comments which have any adverse effect on the functioning of the company, whether any directors are disqualified under one. 64.2. Any qualification adverse remarks regarding maintenance of account where the company has adequate internal financial control and then after that the such other matters as may be prescribed. How many of you were able to visualize when I mentioned these 143 three points? Or you were like, ma'am, if you write it like this, no, then we can make more sense out of it. If you write down 143.3, then you say A point is whether the auditor has obtained information and explanation. B, whether proper books of account as required by law have been kept by the company. C, yes, what does it say? Whether the branch audit report, have they been forwarded to the company auditor? Right? Then whether the balance sheet and profit and loss account, are they in agreement with the books of account? Right. Then whether the financial statements comply with the accounting standards. Then any observations or comments which have an adverse effect on the functioning of the company, that is going concern effect. Whether any directors of the company are disqualified under section 164 subsection 2. Any qualification adverse remarks regarding the maintenance of accounts. And then after that, whether the company has adequate internal financial controls and the operating effectiveness of such control. And then J, such other matters as may be prescribed. Does anybody have a guess of what is there under the such other matters as may be prescribed? You think other matter means balancing figure, nothing much would be over there, right? 
such other matters as may be prescribed. What do you think? You remember, don't think anything. You have to remember what is there under 143.3J. You don't have an option of, oh ma'am, I think this is what should be over there. Yes? How many points are there under 143.3J? You have the, yes, oh correct. Yes, litigation, pending litigations. Very good. Right? So that's the A. Then you have B, C, D. In E, you have E1, E2, and E3 and then you have the F and the G. Oh my god, that seems to be quite an interesting reference. 143.3 J in that J E in that E there is E1 of the Companies Act 2013. Anyways, what is the A over there? Pending litigations, right? Whether the company has disclosed the impact of the pending, made provision for the pending litigations. Then whether the company has made the disclosure for the material foreseeable losses, right? So pending litigations, material foreseeable losses. Then whether there has been any delay in transferring amount to the investor education and the protection fund. Right? Whether there have been any delays in transferring amount to the investor education and protection fund. So whether company has disclosed the impact of the pending litigation. Whether company has provided for the material foreseeable losses. Whether there have been any delays in transferring amount to the investor education and protection fund. Then D has been omitted and no longer there. Okay, then E, what is E? No funds have been advanced by the company, right? So no funds have been advanced other than those disclosed in the notes to account, right? To an intermediary with an understanding, whether recorded in writing or otherwise, that that intermediary will use it for loan, investment, guarantee, security of the ultimate beneficiary. So company is giving to intermediary and intermediary is using it for the ultimate beneficiary. So rather than company giving it directly to the ultimate beneficiary, they are rooting it through the intermediary, right? So rather than eating like this, eating the funds of the company like this, right? So no funds have been advanced. Then what does it say? No funds have been received. So now the intermediary over here becomes the funding party and company has received the funds. Okay, so now funding party is giving the money to the company and out of that money, what is company doing? Loans, investments, guarantee, security on behalf of the ultimate beneficiaries. So you have not given any funds which are ultimately used for the ultimate beneficiaries or you have not received any funds which you are ultimately using for the ultimate beneficiaries of the company. And then management has to give you a representation regarding this. Can, there are no such funds which have been advanced and no such funds which have been received. And auditor, you have to perform audit procedures which you consider to be reasonable and appropriate and conclude that whatever representations the management has given you under one and two above does not contain any material misstatement. So the representation given under E1 and E2, you know, E1, this is E1 and this is E2 does not contain any material misstatement statement right then 143 3jf what is f over there whether the dividend has this paid or declared whether it is in compliance with section no ready made ray you tell me dividend paid or declared very obvious i know you know that dividend paid or declared whether it is in compliance with section no section some section has to be there no Section 123 of the Companies Act 2013 and the last one, whether the company's accounting software has an audit trail feature, whether the company's accounting software has an audit trail feature which has been operated throughout the year, has not been tampered with and has been preserved as per the statutory requirements for the record retention. But has been the company's accounting software, does it have an audit trail feature and whether that audit trail feature, whether it has been operated throughout the year, it has not been tampered with and it has been preserved as per the statutory requirements for the record retention. Okay, right. So anyways, that is other reporting responsibility. Are you understanding that? Where were, where were we? We were discussing this contents of the audit report and other reporting responsibilities. So you have management's responsibility, auditor's responsibility, other reporting responsibilities. And I just discussed with you the 10 points of 143.3. Right? I just discussed with you the 10 points of 143.3. And then after that, you have the signature. 
right signature in the audit report it has to come along with the membership number right the membership number of the chartered accountant right then after that the forms registration number nowadays you can also have an alliance registration number or a network registration number or a multidisciplinary partnership registration number but basically it is the firm's registration number then the udin that is the unique document identification number right so three numbers coming in the signature right the signature which is having the membership number the firm's registration number and the unique document identification number then after that you have the place right the place is the place of the signature and not the place of the office right so you have the signature place and then after that you have the date right so the date on which the auditor signs the audit report which should be only after the financial statements have been approved by the management and only after the auditor has obtained the sufficient appropriate audit evidence the auditor should sign the audit report right the auditor should sign the audit report right so what are these these are the what are these these are the basic elements of the audit report what are the basic elements title addressee opinion basis for opinion going concern key audit matter if any management's responsibility auditor's responsibility other reporting responsibilities 14333 and then after that you have the signature place and date right then after that we have the signature place and date okay right these these are the contents of the audit report in case of an unmodified opinion but some times the auditor may be also required to modify his opinion right when would an auditor be required to modify his opinion right there are only two reasons one reason the financial statements there is a material misstatement there is a material fraud there is a material error in the financial statements and inventory is overvalued by 100 crore depreciation is under provided by 100 crore so there is a material fraud whether a material error whether intentional or unintentional it is material 100% it is exceeding materiality but now i need to check the pervasiveness is it restricted to one item of the financial statement or if it is related to one item whether it is that significant that it is affecting the entire financial statement or whether it's a matter relating to the disclosures so once i check what is the misstatement whether it's a material misstatement then i need to check the pervasiveness okay, whether it is material but not pervasive pervasive means over and overall it's not confined to a particular item it is pervasive it is having an overall effect you understand that or you say this is not having an overall effect it is material but it is not pervasive or you could say it is material and it is pervasive it is not confined it is not restricted to one particular item or one particular area it is having a huge impact it's pervasive it's not confined it's not restricted it's having an overall impact so material misstatement material though it is there is a material fraud or there is a material error if it is material but it is not pervasive in that case auditor you shall issue a you shall issue a qualified opinion saying that the financial statements of the company give a true and fair view except for the effect of the matters described in the basis for the qualified opinion paragraph because in my basis of basis for modified opinion paragraph what is the first thing i will write now the matters which gave rise to the modification okay right then material misstatement so much of fraud so much of error that it is material and is it pervasive also yes it is affecting the overall financial statements it is not restricted to it is not confined to one particular area in that case auditor you will issue an adverse opinion saying that true and fair opposite they are not a true and fair first case i just created an exception reservation true and fair except for leave this much rest everything is okay but adverse nothing is okay not true and fair and not true and fair because of the matters given in the basis for the adverse opinion paragraph okay right second 
the reason what I discussed with you in the beginning also today, right? Limitation on scope. Management is telling auditor, don't check inventory, auditor, don't check debtor, auditor, don't check related party, auditor, don't check contingent liabilities, right? So what is management doing? They are imposing a limitation on scope. What happens due to a limitation on scope, everyone? The auditor is unable to obtain what the sufficient appropriate audit evidence what happens due to a limitation on scope the auditor is unable to obtain what sufficient appropriate audit evidence okay and again for the unable to obtain sufficient appropriate audit evidence that is for the limitation on scope you need to check the pervasiveness Okay, whether it is confined or whether it is not confined. If it is confined, if not confined, if it is confined, that it's only affecting a particular part or not a substantial part of the financial statement. That means it is material but not pervasive. In that case, again, auditor, what to do? You need to issue the yes, qualified opinion, saying that financial statements give a true and fair view except for the possible effect of right the matters described in the basis for the qualified opinion paragraph and last one so how much of evidence they did not give inventory no debtor no share capital no sales no purchase no you know investments of the company no 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 data obtained at all unable to obtain sufficient appropriate audit evidence is it material Yes. Is it pervasive? Yes. In that case, auditor, you will have to give a, in that case, auditor, you will have to give a disclaimer of opinion. Auditor, you will have to give a disclaimer of opinion. Did you notice something? Qualified is an opinion. Adverse is an opinion. But disclaimer is not opinion. It is disclaimer of opinion. You say qualified opinion. Am I right? I say my opinion is qualified. I say my opinion is adverse. So I say qualified opinion. I say adverse opinion. But I don't say disclaimer opinion. I say disclaimer of opinion. Okay? I am not giving you any opinion. Don't ask me. And a disclaimer of opinion. We are not in a position and we do not express an opinion on the financial statements right we do not express an opinion on the financial statements right so disclaimer auditor says tomorrow you invest your money in this company anything goes wrong you lose your money i am not responsible i am right now only putting my hands up saying disclaimer of opinion we are not in a position and we do not express an opinion. Why you are not expressing opinion? You are being going to be paid for expressing opinion. You say, what to do, ma'am? Unable to obtain evidence. You give me evidence, I give you opinion. You don't give me evidence, from where do I give you opinion? Listening? No. Listening? Okay. Very good. Right. So, that is essay 705, the modifications to the opinion in the independent auditor's report. You know, okay, what are the two reasons for the modification? One, there is material fraud error or there is a limitation on scope. The auditor is unable to obtain the evidence. For these two reasons, you need to check whether it is confined or whether it is not confined. So, material but not pervasive or material and pervasive. And accordingly, decide whether to issue the qualified opinion or to issue the adverse opinion or to issue the disclaimer of opinion. Right, qualified adverse or the disclaimer of the opinion. Is it clear to all of you? Right. Now, see over here now we had discussed the contents of the audit report, title, addressee, opinion, basis for opinion. You know, now when I have to modify my opinion, see if it's a clean report, no unmodified opinion, then opinion is just called opinion. So when you see only opinion written, that means it's an unmodified opinion. But if you see, oh, you know, if you have to modify your opinion, then what you will write down in the opinion paragraph heading, modified opinion, right, modified opinion. So, it could be the qualified opinion, adverse opinion or the disclaimer of opinion. 
and second one the basis for opinion paragraph will now become the basis for the modified opinion so now it's not only my opinion it is my modified opinion right so it could be basis for the qualified opinion basis for the adverse opinion or the basis for the disclaimer of opinion right the basis for the disclaimer of opinion are you able to follow this everyone right so uh, the one when it's a clean report and second when you need to modify your opinion so when you need to modify your opinion your opinion paragraph heading changes to either qualified adverse or disclaimer right so qualified opinion adverse opinion or the disclaimer of opinion and in case of the basis for opinion paragraph right the paragraph heading changes to the basis for the modified opinion right so very important essay 705 if you require it at the end of every case study also regarding when which type of modified opinion is to be issued by the auditor okay right so that is regarding a briefing regarding essay 705 and then after that we also have the essay 706 right so 706 is regarding what it is regarding the emphasis of matter right emphasis of matter paragraph and the other matter paragraph in the independent auditor's report right the emphasis of matter paragraph and the other matter paragraph in the independent auditor's report right so emphasis of matter auditor wants to highlight auditor wants to place importance he wants to say that this matter is very very fundamental to the user's understanding and he can give a clear reference to the financial statements then auditor you can put it in your audit report in the emphasis of matter paragraph say there is a litigation going on of the company and for this litigation the management has made the disclosure in the notes to account but auditor says this matter is fundamental to the user's understanding and it's already given in the financial statement. So you can make a reference to where that information is given in financial statements. Then that he can mention in the audit report in the emphasis of matter paragraph. And other matter, it's not related to financial statements. You know, it's, if it's related to financial statements, emphasis of matter. It is not related to financial statements, but it is relevant to the user's understanding. Users of audit report, users of financial statements, they should know about this. This report is only for a specific set of users. Or this financial statements which we have audited have been prepared by management as a special purpose framework. You understand? Or auditor wanted to resign, but he could not resign. So it's relevant to the user's understanding, then that you can put it in your audit report in the other matter paragraph. Right. So how many matters? So many matters, ma'am. Don't worry about the matter. Still the time we don't finish our exam, matter after matter coming in life. Okay. So 701 also has a matter. What is the matter of 701? Key audit matter. Key audit matter. What is the keyword? Let me see. Key audit matter. What is the keyword? We already discussed, huh? Nothing new. Yes. Quick, 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 quick. No quick? Okay, so. Hmm. Okay, 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 okay. That's good. Key audit matter. Yes, matters which are of most significance in the audit of the financial statements of the current period. Okay, right. So that is the key audit matter, right? Matters which are of most significance. And these matters you select from the matters which you communicate to TCWG in accordance with SA 260, right? That is the communication with the those charged with governance. Okay, right. So I just wanted to have a brief, uh, uh, what do you say, revision with you regarding the 
uh, engagement letter and the audit report okay so that part of the discussion we've just done now what we'll do because it's an inter audit knockout series so first thinking of a name you know okay what like uh, i think even when a child is born you think regarding what name should be given to the child so then i was thinking okay i have to take youtube revision series and then what name to be given like whether we should call it as an audit premier league or a booster or a marathon or a fast track or something so i thought now these students are just you know so close to the exam date over there so it's like whatever effort they put it into the last minute either on this side of the world or that side of the world so it's like knockout either you win the match or lose the match and you know? so it's like the final overs which you are playing right now right so accordingly so any difficulties any challenges which you are facing while studying your subject i'll get back to the i want to i finish one phase of my discussion i'll come to the next phase of the discussion uh, but before that i would uh, like to take this opportunity uh, to have an interaction with the students uh, regarding anything that they would like to yes very much relevant how huh? see relevant it should be not anything which doesn't make sense okay right but you would like to mention about or say something about we'll be meeting every day every day means next three days so today tomorrow and day after okay that's how it's planned then after inter we meet final also okay yes hmm how is your studies going on are you quite motivated for your preparations okay able to grasp concepts concepts but difficult to remember so cumulative revision that's the solution to it important areas to concentrate in the last minute so whatever we marked in the books as the important questions the five star or the all time favorite questions those are the ones you need to go through last minute and uh, plus i would suggest that you go through the mtp rtp and the uh, mtp rtp and uh, also the suggested of maybe last three attempts if now time doesn't permit you to go for five attempts or 10 attempts or so so at least like two and Of, of preferably three you know those many you go through it so that would be good presentation be neat and tidy in your paper uh, catch up speed from page 1 of the paper rather than writing very dramatically in the beginning and then towards the end uh, making a rap what you say a uh, what you say a mess over there in your paper how to get exemption so you know you should be seen nowhere in the world for the till the date of your exams till the date of your last paper you should be invisible to the world no one should be aware of your existence so that's the trick uh, or that's the uh, what you say advice i can give you for getting an exemption how do we wrap the entire syllabus in 1.5 days so you need to prepare the tidbits of the subject so that you know or uh, you know okay okay uh, okay this is the crux of what is the chapter don't end up reading it on one day before the exam right so you just go through the crux of the what you need to do one there are three ways one either you know the one correct answer so you don't bother about what are the other three so that's trick one okay right for the tricky mcq that's trick one okay right then second one you know the three wrong ones so you know three are wrong then whatever is one which is left that has to be the correct one and mostly we come under the third situation wherein it is 50 50 wherein you know we drop out two we say b and c 100% not the option but a and d and the final finale is between a and d over there in the exam right so you need to keep on eliminating the wrong options and then trying to reach to the appropriate answer over there right so that could be the trick for the mcqs okay right so all good that's it miss judging the question yeah that's the biggest problem you know you have an ocean of knowledge with you but in the exam if you are not able to identify hey what are they asking about or what what i need to write where in the paper if that you don't know then all the knowledge the ocean of knowledge which you have few times absolutely like waste because no use na you are not able to you know don't know where to paste which answer so then now this is the problem you know the problem i'm so happy that you've done your swot analysis now what is the solution for that 
MTP RTP suggested. Pick up the question. Pick up the question and see whether it's clicking to you. What should be the answer? Then go and see whether you have read, think, thought of the correct answer. Not thought. Then you know again establish the correct connection in your mind. Right. So if you look at a few number of questions only, then you will be able to establish the link. Na? So theory, 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 pad ke chale jate ho. Fir pata nahi wo theory ka karna kya hota hai. You don't know what to do of the theory. Just happily, happily reading, 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 reading theory. Are what? How that theory will become a question in the exam that you should know? No. Am I right? Okay. Right. Uh, unable to write exactly what I know. Questions are very difficult to identify. So I think I just talked about that. That whatever you study, if you see a particular topic also, if you're studying, you have to think, hey boss, how this could be, how could a question on this one be asked in the exam? Right? So if you look into like any author book that you're using, all authors are absolutely amazing. All books are absolutely amazing. Institute study material is great. It's just that your preparations have to be great. Right? So at the end of the chapter, you see this question and answer bank over there, and this is the inter audit book. Right? So I have given like innumerable number of the not innumerable, 500 plus correct and correct, putting all the chapters together. So you get a lot of practice of the correct and correct to be here also. And then you know, ki boss, agar preconditions, that was rather the first question which we studied today. And so preconditions for an order. What, now I could have just mentioned one question over there, but kuch kaharan hai na, ki maine charo question laga hai maa pe. Ke isi liye matlab ke, ha, ke aise is tarike se, ke this is how the question could be asked in the exams. Hai na? Okay, so that is what, okay, uh, I'm getting, okay, correct and correct. So, a correct and correct. So, even though if it's a two mark question over there, you need to write like six, seven lines over there. It, it depends on answer to answer. Some answers you just need to copy paste the answer generally when it is the correct, when the answer to the correct and correct is correct. Okay, but it's not like, okay, it's just two marks. So, how can I write six, seven lines? No, kabhi kabhi aise bhi zarurat hoti hai, ke bhali do marks ke liye poochha jai. But you have to write down six, seven lines also. Okay. Topics which can be left. I wish I could tell you that. I wish, but not possible. Okay. Uh, not getting where to start every time, getting uh, less than a particular marks. Okay, right. So then in that case, you need to start with company audit. You need to do CARO. Then you need to pick up one one item of the financial statement. Then one one chapter like bank audit, government audit. And then at the same time, look into a little bit of the standards. If you have not understood the sentence which I spoke right now, later on the recorded version will be available on YouTube. You can listen to me pause by pause and you can note down that what I have said and what I have said is follow me. You understand that? Okay. Right. So, all good everyone. I think I have taken enough number of questions. Aise to tum hi jaoge. Okay. So, we will just uh, stop with the questions over there. I will take it later. Okay, I will get exemption and send you the mark. Oh my God, just look at uh, the, what do you say, the positivity in which you have been molded. Like you were just concerned about it and now you are having the positive outlook towards the preparation. I'm happy. Okay, that's a good job. Okay, right. So now anyways, uh, this is the seventh edition of the book. This is for inter audit, which I have opened over here. Uh, something interesting, which I would like to highlight in this particular book over here, is that a lot of effort has been put to, uh, to put some images over there. Right. So like communicating key audit matters. So this fellow is like, you know, holding a... Now, what do you say? A loudspeaker in his hand and then making an announcement of all the key audit matters. So sometimes, you know, pictorial memory, it works better. So you're just having then determining key audit matters. So if the risk is high, then you say, boss, this is a key audit matter. And uh, then you have the basic elements. So not too many of them, but just as how much salt is there in a vegetable, uh, that much of the images have also been introduced okay so signature and then the place and then bias you know regarding the auditor's opinion then the evaluations of the auditor right so just to add a little bit of liveliness to the book these have been a few uh, what do you say images which have been added over there and then you have abundant of the correct and correct over there so not a time for you to opt for any new book at this point of time even though if you're following the study material that would be great okay right so let me just come to the questions in the rtp may 23 
right for the inter audit because this is the inter audit knockout series so let us just have a quick look regarding the questions so those of you who are having a problem identifying the question probably we'll be able to address that over here okay according to sa 315 the objective of the auditor is to identify and assess the risk of material misstatement whether due to fraud or error only at the assertion level kya baat kar rahe and not only at the assertion level but also at the financial statement level as well as at the assertion level okay so this statement is incorrect what does it say not only at the assertion level but also at the financial statement level right so according to sa 315 the objective of the auditor is to identify and assess the rmm at the financial statement level as well as at the assertion level how through understanding the entity and its environment including the internal control okay control environment can pdc can prevent detect and correct a material misstatement control environment in itself cannot prevent detect or correct a material misstatement however it can help in you know having the operating what you say the good control environment in the organization the good honesty ethical behavior it can influence the effectiveness of the controls in the organization right so control environment in itself does not prevent detect or correct this good ethics of the management that itself does it stop from committing a fraud no now there are lesser lesser chances of fraud happening right so does not in itself pdc prevent or detect and correct it may however influence the auditor's evaluation of the effect of the other control and thereby the auditor's assessment of the rmm at risk of material misstatement while auditing the books of account the auditor of a company looked at the inventory counting process to obtain audit evidence in the present case audit procedure used by the auditor is known as inspection no 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 that is not inspection he looked are he looked so that means he did observation an inspection you do of any document or asset you are what the auditor has done the observation taking a look at a process or a procedure being performed by others okay then when inventory under the custody and control of a third party is material to the financial statements the auditor can obtain sufficient appropriate audit evidence regarding the existence and condition of that inventory by taking written representations from the management So it says auditor if inventory of the client is with the third party you just take a written representation from the management that so much of our inventory is with the third party no 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 as an auditor sa 501 audit evidence specific consideration for the selected items right what auditor will do he will obtain the confirmation from the third party or he will perform the inspection or the other audit procedures right or perform the inspection or the other audit procedures only taking written representation no okay assertions refer to the representations by the auditor to consider the different types of potential misstatement that may occur no that is not what is meant by the assertions right what do you mean by assertions these are representations by the management not by the auditor these are representations by the management whether explicit or embodied so explicit means clearly stated if this is you know that the building has been mortgaged against so and so or it is assumed okay, if the value of the building is shown this is the historical cost of the building so it's the embodied in the financial statements as used by the auditor to consider the different types of potential misstatement that may occur right so assertions refer to the representations by the management right not by the auditor okay right next one as per sa 200 in the overall objectives in conducting an audit the overall objective of the auditor is to obtain a oh my god calamity obtain absolute assurance no 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 to obtain the reasonable assurance that financial statements are free from material misstatement whether due to fraud or error okay once the overall audit has been established an audit plan can be developed to address the various matters identified in the overall audit strategy the establishment of the overall audit strategy and the detailed audit plan are closely interrelated right so here what does it say 
once the overall audit strategy so though they have not used the word strategy here what they mean is once the overall audit strategy has been established an audit plan can be developed and they are not consequential and sequential process as they are closely interrelated right as they are closely interrelated and the last one what, what does it say teaming and leading is one of the techniques of inflating the cash payments no it is one of the techniques of suppressing the cash receipts the cash receipt from one customer shown as if received from the earlier customer and so how far is this received from the next customer and so far so how that's how the free funds of the company are used okay right then after that we have the theory questions over there like professional integrity and independence are considered essential characteristics of all the profession there are two interlinked perspectives of independence of the auditor one independence of mind and two independence in appearance explain Right, so now they are talking about the independence of mind and the independence and the appearance. Right, so what are the two independence over there? Independence of mind, state of mind that permits the provision of an opinion without being affected by the influences allowing an individual to act with integrity, objectivity and the professional skepticism. So independence of mind, it's the state of mind and independence in appearance, the avoidance of facts and circumstances that are so significant that the third party could think that the integrity, objectivity or the professional competence of the auditor has been compromised okay so independence not only of the mind but also the independence in the appearance right also the independence in the appearance right so it says integrity of mind and the appearance and then after that explain the guiding principles in the above context so as an auditor how does he ensure that he maintains his independence right so what does it say for the public to have confidence in the quality of the audit it is essential that auditor always be and appear to be how beautifully they write be and appear to be independent of the entities that they are auditing. So not only be, but even a third party should think that, yeah, yeah, this auditor is independent. So be and appear to be independent. Then what does it say? Only then he can comply with the requirement of integrity, objectivity and professional skepticism, which require him to be independent. Without being independent, you can't say I'm a person of integrity. I'm having objectivity. I maintain professional skepticism. Not possible without independence. Right. Then auditor, you have to consciously, before taking any work, check whether there are any threats to the independence of the auditor. Then if threats have been identified, then auditor, you need to take steps to reduce or eliminate those threats. And what if you cannot? You say, ma'am, I'm not able to reduce the threat. Then what? Not to accept the work. Independence, non-compromisable, non-negotiable. And you cannot. Title of audit report, kya hai? Independent auditor's report. How you will write semi-independent auditor's report? No, Ray, you can't write half-independent auditor's report or unindependent auditor's report. You say, ma'am, what you are putting in our mind, nothing like this was there in our mind. So that's what I'm telling you now. All this should not be there in your mind, half-independent audit report, semi-independent audit report. It's only independent auditor's report. Right? So it's only the independent auditors report my god you guys are rocking okay next one the actions of the engagement partner and appropriate messages to the other members of engagement team in taking responsibility for the overall quality on each audit engagement emphasize the importance to audit quality explained with reference to sa220 Right, so in every audit, should there be the quality maintained in the conduct of the audit? Yes, and it is whose responsibility? It is the responsibility of the engagement partner. And what should the engagement partner ensure? Importance of audit quality. That one, you don't do your work as you wish. How you do your work? The auditor, the engagement team, the engagement partners, they do their work as per the professional standards. That is all the auditing accounting standards and the regulatory and legal requirements. Right? So work is done as per the professional standards and also as per the legal and regulatory requirements and not as you wish. 
Second, what does it say? Comply with the form quality control policies and procedures. So next, ensure that the quality is how you can say that there is quality when there is compliance with the form quality control policies and procedures. Then what is the ultimate deliverable of the form? The audit report to be issued. So what does it say? The reports issued, are they appropriate in these circumstances? So auditor, are you issuing the appropriate audit report? And if you come to know, okay, oh, this particular audit, they are not maintaining the quality. They are not doing the work properly. There is no proper policies and procedures being followed. The engagement team members, they should be able to raise the matter without the fear of, you know, it bouncing back on them only. Okay, you know, I said, uh, the, I brought to the attention that they are not doing order properly and everybody started attacking me only. So it says no. The engagement team's ability to raise concerns without the fear of the reprisal. You know, without the fear that it might, you only might become the victim or so. It says, don't worry, we'll safeguard you against the victimization. Right, so that is audit quality. That is there in SA 220. Quality control for an audit of the financial statements. Okay. Next one, an audit is distinct from investigation, okay. However, it is quite possible that sometimes investigation results from the prima facie findings of the auditor. Discuss. So, rather this is there in one of the inherent limitation of an audit, wherein we say audit is not an official investigation into the alleged wrongdoing. But sometimes based on the findings of the audit, it may lead to an investigation. You know, based on the prima facie findings in the audit, the auditor is yes, the management may decide or the shareholders may decide that an investigation is required to be conducted. Right? So audit is distinct. In what is audit? Audit is an independent examination of financial information. Whereas what is investigation? It is a critical examination for a special purpose. You know, it's a critical examination for a special purpose. If fraud is suspected, then what does it say? It takes the character of an investigation. But in an audit, you don't suspect. Right? In an audit, you're not suspicious. In an audit, you're only cautious. Right? If you be suspicious, then it becomes an investigation. If it is cautious, then it's an audit. You know, professional skepticism. Right? The objective of the audit is to obtain the Reasonable assurance. Therefore, audit is never started with the preconceived notion about the state of affairs, about the wrongdoing. And audit is not an official investigation into alleged wrongdoing. When I go for the audit only, I don't have a thought, oh, everybody is a fraud, everything is a fraud in the company. No, it is not started with such a preconceived notion. However, it is quite possible that some investigation results from the prima facie findings of the auditor that while doing audit you found out there is something wrong in the valuation of inventory and because of that you decided to do the investigation and so based on the prima facie findings of the auditor right so what does it say auditor has given some findings of the serious concerns and such findings may call for an investigation okay Right. So that covers one more question. Then SA 300 states that auditor should plan his work to enable him to conduct an effective audit in an efficient, timely manner. What are the matters which should be covered in the plan of the auditor? So I have to do the audit of an entity. And now when I have to do the audit, I have to prepare an audit plan. Now, in order to prepare an audit plan, what matters should be considered by the auditor? Number one matter, you have to obtain the knowledge of the entity. So, in a KOC, acquiring knowledge of the client's accounting system, policies and the internal control procedures. Only then you can accordingly develop your audit plan. What does it say? The audit plan should enable him to conduct an effective audit in an efficient and timely manner. And when you're preparing your plan, what matters you should cover? Right. So one matter you should cover is acquire knowledge of the client's accounting internal control system. Then you understood the internal control system. Then how much reliance are you going to place on their internal control? Because if you're going to place reliance, you may do less substantive. If you're not going to place reliance, then you need to do more substantive procedures, right? More detailed checking. Then determining and programming the nature, timing and extent of the audit procedures to be performed. So deciding upon the NTE, nature, timing and extent of the audit procedures.
with the homage of the risk assessment procedures and the further audit procedures and last one coordinating the work to be performed right coordinating right so different areas in the audit different branches of the entity so different uh, parts of the financial statement 70 80 members in your engagement team so all that work of all of them you have to coordinate it like right now also are you coordinating your eight subjects together you coordinating 12 hours in a day 24 hours out of that 17 hours you're studying and then you're coordinating through three hours this subject two hours that subject so are you coordinating are you planning and doing your studies i know you're doing that okay right so coordinating the work to be performed right so that is regarding the audit plan should cover the following and one more we will do over here from the Right, 4B over there. Adequate planning benefits the audit of financial statements in several ways. Explain. So, in simple language, what are they asking over here? The advantages of the audit planning. Right, in simple language, what are they asking over here is the advantages of the audit planning. Okay, what is the benefit of preparing an audit plan? Right, what is the benefit? Benefit, right? So, it's not that you just go for the audit and you start checking some area anyways every day we have to check something so might as well check anything but every day anyways you have to check so today inventory tomorrow debtor then share capital then investment loans related party no what does it say you know which area how much time how much importance is to be given so appropriate attention is devoted to important areas of the audit many of you would have realized okay, audit I always thought less important area in my CA inter study so less time to be given then you realize boss that's not the situation lot of ample amount of time to be given to audit is it right so appropriate attention is devoted to important areas of audit then potential problems are promptly identified and resolved you know oh if i have to give the report by this date with so many people not possible i require more people in my team Right, I require the more people in my engagement team, right? So potential problems are promptly identified. Work is conducted in an efficient and effective manner. Right, so work is conducted in an efficient and effective manner. So again, the smooth conduct of the work. Everybody knows what work they are required to perform. And then when you prepare a plan, you know which work, which area to give to which people. Okay, you check um, what I think you would be good at checking provision. You check provision. What you do, you check PP, property plant equipment. What you do, you check all the related party disclosures, right? So selection of the engagement team members with appropriate capabilities and competence to respond to the anticipated risk, right? So selection of team members. Then once you select your team members, then also deciding upon the direction, supervision and the review. Well, okay, who will give the direction that is planned? Who will do the supervision that is planned? And who is going to review the work? And the work of a less experienced team member needs to be reviewed by a more experienced team member. So again, that is planned. Okay, who is going to do the direction? Who is going to do the supervision? And who is going to do the review? And then last one, coordinating the work done by the other auditors and the experts, auditor of the components. So say company has 500 branches and these 500 branches are being audited by the 500 branch auditors. Auditors. So now you'll have to coordinate. No, you will have to, what do you say, coordinate the your audit work with them or say there is some work which is being done by the expert. So then you'll also have to coordinate with the expert. What are these? These are the advantages of the audit planning. What are these? These are the advantages of the audit planning. Okay. And before we go to the MCQ part, just one so that we finish this chapter two part of the discussion over here. It says in just question number five and then we go to MCQs. In establishing the overall audit strategy, the auditor shall identify the characteristics of the engagement that define the scope. Explain with example. Right. So when you establish Establish your audit strategy, you have to consider the reporting objectives, then the characteristics of the engagement that define the scope. Then you need to consider those areas which are significant in directing the engagement team efforts, results of preliminary engagement activities, and the nature, timing, and extent of the resources. If what I am telling you is not reaching to your mind, that means you need to go to the heading in your book for the establishment of the overall audit strategy. In the establishment of the overall audit strategy, there are five points. Characteristics of the engagement that define its scope, 
then the reporting objectives, then professional judgment ke which areas are significant in directing the engagement team efforts, results of preliminary engagement activities, and the nature, timing, and extent of the resources. In that, they are asking specifically what are the auditor has to identify the characteristics that will define the scope of the engagement. So what would decide the scope of the engagement? So it says the expected audit coverage like the number and location of the components to be audited. Then it depends upon the business segments to be audited and how much evidence are you going to use from the previous audits right so that will help you to decide the oh yes the scope of the audit right that will help you to decide the scope of the audit okay and now what we do right we should have a holistic discussion now so thoda thoda little you know we discussed engagement letter and the auditor's report then after that we discussed a little bit of a few questions from the rtp over there now what we'll do little bit simple simple ones we'll look into the questions from the like the integrated case scenario booklet of the icai we'll just quickly go through the MCQs over there. So in one of the days, we look into correct and correct and all also. So in case if you are writing the answers in the answer box, write down as one, uh, one for one, the option is A, for two, the option is B or whatever it is. Okay, just don't write down A, B, C, D. So many A, B, C, D will be there. Can't identify which A is for whom. And so you just need to uh, write, be more accurate, uh, correct if in case you are typing. If you are just doing it on your own, then that's not an issue. Okay, right. So Dash along with other disciplines such as accounting and law equips you with all the knowledge that is required to enter into auditing as a profession. Now, obviously, we have a question in CA enter in the introduction to auditing relationship of auditing with other disciplines. Right. So auditing with along with the other disciplines such as accounting and law. Right. So we have a question regarding auditing and accounting, auditing and law, auditing and economics, auditing and statistics and mathematics, then auditing and production, auditing and data processing, auditing and financial management. Right. So relationship of auditing with different disciplines disciplines okay right so amazing some of you follow my instructions no no that's amazing right you've written one a no business or institution can effectively carry on its activities without the help of proper audit records and accounts neither a nor b both a and b yes no business or institution can effectively carry on its activities without the help of proper Audit to may or may not get done. But what does it say? Records and account to compulsory. Na? Like, you know, you have two types of audit. One, audits which are required under the law. And second, voluntary audit, like sole proprietorship, partnership firm, and uh, what you say, the HUF. So there's no legal requirement for getting an audit done. But do they have to maintain records and accounts? Yeah, without that, you cannot effectively carry on the activities. Right? So that it is records and accounts. Okay. Right. As per SA 200 overall objectives in conducting an audit, the overall objectives of the auditor are ta-ta, 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 not ta-ta, read to obtain reasonable assurance, to report on financial statements, both A and B, to obtain absolute assurance. Absolute assurance, no, 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 don't say absolute assurance, please, you'll break my heart. What do you say then? To obtain reasonable assurance to report on the financial statements. Correct. Both A and B. Amazing. Dash. You know, IESBA, the International Ethical Standard Board, which relates to an audit of financial statements, establishes which of the following as the fundamental principle of professional ethics relevant to the auditor when conducting an audit of financial statements. We've discussed ethical requirement now. Ethical requirement, fundamental principle, one and the same thing. Professional judgment, professional skepticism, professional intelligence. What is this? And professional competence and due care. Yes, 4 is what? 4A, 4B, 4C, 4D. Which combination? Hmm? Which one? 4D. Very good. What is the fundamental principle? The professional competence and the due care. Amazing. Good. The auditor's dash safeguards the auditor's ability to form an audit opinion without being affected by any influences. The auditors, only if you are, only if you are, what? 
only then you can form an opinion without being affected by any influences the auditors yes the auditor independence correct right safeguards the auditor's ability to form an opinion without being affected without being affected by any influences that is your objectivity right that's your objectivity so you can be objective only when you are independent that's what they say which of the following is the responsibility of the auditor which of the following is the responsibility of the auditor preparation and presentation of financial statements in accordance with applicable financial reporting design implementation and maintenance of internal control express an opinion on financial statements to obtain limited assurance right six what is the answer for six which of the following is the responsibility of the auditor it is the responsibility of the auditor to express an opinion on the financial statements correct right an employee of fruits and vegetable limited what the name fruits and vegetable was of the opinion that auditor of the company is required to express an opinion on which one of the following the auditor of the company is required to express an opinion on the balance sheet of the company financial statements of the company only profit and loss account of the company or only cash flow statement of the company obviously auditor you have to express an opinion on the financial statements of the company correct that was an easy one but easy things also contribute a lot in getting good marks in the exam okay the auditor of delicious sweets limited first fruits and vegetable now delicious sweets what are they saying okay was of the opinion that objective of audit of financial statements of a company is to obtain reasonable assurance that financial statements of that company are free from misstatement which type of misstatements are mentioned by the auditor of delicious sweets it's limited simple misstatement material misstatement easy misstatement or competent misstatement which misstatements are free from you know that am i right are free from yes are free from the material misstatement right are free from the material misstatement okay next one if the auditor concludes that there is a reasonable justification to change the engagement and if the audit work performed complies with the essays applicable to the changed engagement the report issued would be appropriate for the revised terms of engagement right so you if there is a change in terms you and there is a reasonable justification then you issue the report based on the revised terms in order to avoid confusion i just discussed this with you in the beginning of the class the report would not include reference to the original engagement or any procedure that may have been performed in the original engagement the original engagement any procedures that may have been performed in the original engagement or the original engagement and any procedures that may be performed so i told you, you know the question is ke in between the two points whether there is an and or whether there is an or so the report should not include reference to the to the original engagement or any procedures that may be performed in the original engagement correct next one if the auditor is unable to agree to a change in the terms of engagement and is not permitted by the management to continue the engagement so he is unable to agree to the change he is not permitted to continue also the auditor shall withdraw from the engagement determine whether there is any obligation either contractual or otherwise withdraw from the engagement and determine whether there is any obligation or withdraw from the engagement or determine whether there is any obligation i hope you are able to observe the fine readings over there right so a b a and b or a or b huh? that's how we can interpret the question as right so withdraw from the audit engagement where possible and to determine what does it say whether there is any obligation contractual or otherwise okay next one a request from the client for the auditor to change the engagement right may result from a change in circumstances a misunderstanding as to the nature of an audit a restriction on the scope of the engagement so why is the client telling you to change the terms of the engagement so we said limitation on scope could be imposed by the management due to change in circumstances or there is any misunderstanding as to the nature of the audit or there is a 
restriction on the scope of the engagement right so what is the correct option over here one two three so one two three is there in c right so all three over there okay right sqc one provides that unless otherwise specified by law regulation or the documentation is the property of the management or the documentation is the property of those charged with governance or the documentation is the property of management or those charged with governance or the documentation is the property of the auditor sqc1 standard on quality control 1 provides that audit documentation is the property of the auditor he may at his discretion i hope you know that amazing sentence over there the auditor may at his discretion make portions of or extract from his working papers available to the client unless portions from or extracts from his working paper available to the client what does it say unless what you say it will undermine the quality of the undermine the validity of the work performed or in case of an assurance engagement the independence of the auditor or of his personnel Right. So, engagement documentation, audit documentation, it is the property of the auditor. The auditor may at his discretion make portions of or extracts from his working papers available to the client without undermining the validity of the work performed or in case of an assurance engagement, the independence of the auditor or of his personnel. Okay. Right. Oh my God, such easy, easy ones. As explained in SA 200, DASH is obtained when the auditor has obtained sufficient appropriate audit evidence to reduce audit risk to an acceptably low level. Absolute, limited, reasonable, reasonable or absolute. Obviously, it is the reasonable assurance that financial, yes, reasonable assurance that, that auditor has obtained the sufficient appropriate audit evidence to reduce audit risk to an acceptably low level. Okay. Next one, DASH sets the scope, timing and direction of the audit that guides the development of the more detailed plan. So what sets the scope, timing and direction of the audit that guides in the development? I think you should not be even required to see the options over here. Before seeing the options only, you should be knowing what is the answer. So DASH sets the scope, timing and direction of the audit that guides the development of the more detailed audit plan. Yes, wonderful. The audit strategy, right? The overall audit strategy sets the scope, timing and direction of the audit that guides in the development of the more detailed audit plan. Okay, next one. Planning is a dash process of an audit that often begins shortly after the completion of the previous audit. So the moment you finish your earlier audit, you start thinking about the next audit and you keep on thinking about the next audit till the time you don't finish with that audit. Right. And continues until the completion of the current audit engagement. Right. So planning is a dash process of an audit that often begins. Right. Is it a discrete phase of an audit or is it a continual and iterative process? Right. What is it? Is it a continual or discrete or neither continual, not discrete and strategic process? Right. Planning is a right continuous process of the audit. Right. Continual and iterative process which begins shortly after the completion of the previous engagement and continues right up to the completion of the current audit engagement. Okay. Read the two statements and then you need to say statement one is correct, two is correct, both are correct, both are incorrect. Establishment of overall audit strategy and the detailed audit plan are not necessarily discrete or sequential process, but are closely interrelated. We just said that. Okay. The auditor shall establish an overall audit strategy that guides the development of the audit plan. Yeah, you establish an audit strategy and then you develop an audit plan. Right. So both statements, are they correct? Yes. Both statement one and two are correct. Okay. Right. Next one, which of the following is not addressed by audit strategy? Scope of the audit, timing of the audit, direction of the audit, monitoring of the audit. Which of the following is not addressed? Which is not addressed? The monitoring of the audit. Because what we say over there, scope, timing and direction of the audit. So monitoring of the audit is not discussed and addressed in the overall audit strategy. Okay. Overall audit strategy and the audit plan remain the, obviously, audit strategy, audit plan, it is the responsibility of the 
auditor right it is the responsibility of the auditor right so remain the auditor's responsibility okay next one determining a percentage you know you know for determination of materiality materiality in planning and performing an audit you use a concept of benchmarking and benchmarking and then to, to the chosen benchmark you apply your percentage and then whatever is the resulting amount that is materiality so we say percentage into benchmark is equal to materiality so what percentage you need to decide what benchmark you need to decide but once you decide these two and multiply you get the materiality so yes determining a percentage to be applied to a chosen benchmark involves the exercise of the professional judgment you know involves the exercise of independence professional judgment professional skepticism professional behavior no it involves the exercise of the professional judgment okay which of the following is not an example of a benchmark in determining materiality for the financial statements as a whole okay which of them is not a benchmark so can i take pbt as a benchmark yes can i take revenue as a benchmark yes can i take equity as a benchmark yes can i take audit program as a benchmark how to take audit program as a benchmark not possible so audit program no and no, that cannot be taken as a benchmark then which of the following is correct the auditor shall establish an audit plan are are no 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 we establish audit strategy na to aage pad ke fayda hi nahi hai na na then auditor shall establish an overall audit strategy that sets the scope timing and direction of the audit and there is no need to guide the development are are no there is a need to guide the development of the audit plan the auditor shall establish an audit strategy that sets the scope timing and direction of the audit and that guides the development of the audit plan seems good but let's see the last one the auditor shall establish an audit plan no 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 we establish audit strategy for so the auditor shall establish an audit strategy that sets the scope timing and direction of the audit that guides the development of the audit plan okay right planning an audit involves what does it involve establishing the audit strategy and developing the audit plan establishing the audit plan no 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 you establish strategy establishing the audit plan no no developing audit strategy are you know you establish strategy and you develop the plan right so establishing the overall audit strategy and developing an audit plan okay when planning the audit the auditor considers what would make the financial information materially misstated the auditor need not consider what would make them materially misstated the auditor need not consider what would make them materially misstated at planning stage and the auditor needs to consider what would make the financial information materially misstated while conducting the audit only not while planning the audit no when planning the audit the auditor considers what would make the financial statements materially misstated so in simple language that is your you know whether there is any risk of material misstatement okay right rmm okay sa320 materiality in planning and performing an audit requires that an auditor what does it require should not consider should consider maybe should not consider no should consider but need not consider are you ready should consider materiality and its relationship with audit risk while conducting the audit so you need to we say no materiality and audit risk they are inversely related right so materiality and its relationship with audit risk while conducting the audit okay right which of the following is true internal audit plan should be comprehensive enough to ensure that it helps in achieving of the above overall objectives of an internal audit internal audit plan generally be consistent with the goals and objectives of internal audit function as listed out in the internal audit charter as well as the goals and objectives in case the entire internal audit uh, of or the particular engagement has been outsourced the internal auditor should also ensure that the plan is consistent with the terms of the engagement right so which of the following is true right whatever they are mentioning over there all of that is true right all of that is true okay regarding the internal audit plan then once the overall audit strategy has been established dash can be developed now to you are confident itna time se main wohi to discuss kar rahi hu nahi par tum sun hi nahi rahe ho mujhse mujhe pehle se 
मैं वही तो बोल रही हूँ ना एस्टैब्लिश ऑडिट स्ट्रेटेजी डेवलप ऑडिट प्लान राइट सो वॉट इज इट से डैश कैन बी डेवलप सो वॉट कैन बी डेवलप ऑडिट प्लान कैन बी डेवलप यू माइट बी हैविंग अ क्वेश्चन कि मैम और कितने एम सी क्यू कराओगे तो है ना थर्टी तक ही जाएंगे टेंशन ना लो हाउ मेनी एम सी क्यूज थर्टी फिर उसके बाद मैम नाइन थर्टी तक क्लास है तो फिर क्या कराओगे फिर मैं तुम्हें कारों के क्वेश्चन पूछूंगी तो टेंशन नॉट I'll be asking you. Okay, right. The auditor shall develop an audit plan that shall include a description of nature, timing, and extent of planned risk assessment procedures. Nature, timing, and extent of planned further audit procedures at the assertion level. Other planned audit procedures that are required to be carried out so that the engagement complies with the standards on auditing. All of the above. Right. So the auditor shall develop an audit plan that shall include a description of a b c you can't make these noises in the exam i'm telling you huh? nature timing and extent of the risk assessment procedures further audit procedures and the other audit procedures to comply with the standards on auditing okay ha huh. a response that indicates the difference between the information requested to be confirmed and the information provided by the confirming party is negative confirmation a failure of the confirming party to respond or fully respond to a positive confirmation request or a confirmation request returned unreturned a returned undelivered is an exception one is correct two is correct one and two are incorrect both one and two are Correct. Yes. Don't go with my sound effect. You think on your own. The response that indicates a difference between information requested to be confirmed and information provided is an exception. That is not negative confirmation. Negative confirmation. क्या होता है? Only if the confirming party disagrees. Only then it has to provide. And a failure of the confirming party to respond. That is considered as non-response. Hana? That is considered as non-response, not as exception. Everything incorrect. Both one and two are incorrect. Okay. Next one. Vijay is the statutory auditor of X Y Z. During the process of assembling the audit file, hein, which is an administrative process, see Vijay briefed his team as to what all changes can be made to the audit documentation at that stage, at the assembly stage of the audit. Which of the following changes cannot be made to the audit documentation during the final assembly process? Cannot be made. I mean, three of them can be made during the assembly process. sorting collating referencing working papers signing of completion checklist deleting discarding superseded documentation recalculation of depreciation which of the following changes cannot be made to the audit documentation during the final assembly process which cannot be made right the recalculation of the depreciation why because you cannot perform any new procedure you cannot reach any new conclusion when you are doing the assembly of the final audit file it is only an administrative process so can i do sorting collating cross referencing of working paper yes can i sign off the completed checklist yes can i delete the superseded documentation yes but can we recalculate depreciation no we cannot recalculate the depreciation and then the next one which of the following is not correct are ba sa 230 audit documentation sa 500 audit evidence sa 505 what is it external confirmations what is written representation that is sa 580 and sa 560 subsequent event so which of the following is not correct sa 505 written representations okay right so anyways we've had a look at a few of the yes mcqs over there and now last uh, five minutes left with us so probably let's try to have a look into a few clauses of caro and let me say have a, a test with all of you and you need to tell me what is clause 9c of caro 2020 9c of para 3 of caro 2020 fastest finger first quickly tell me clause 9c waiting clause 9 what is it you studied caro inter level they ask you the reporting requirements under clause 9 of caro clause 2 of caro directly full reporting clause asked in the exams 
yes nine nine is regarding the repayments yes whether company has made any defaults then whether company has been declared to be a willful defaulter and then what is 9c whether whether term loans are whether term loans have they been applied for the purpose for which they have been obtained you know whether term loans have they been applied for the purpose for which they have been obtained okay right let me try a more complicated one not complicated one if you've studied is nothing is going to be complicated for you at clause 14 b of caro 2020 again para 3 of caro 2020 i'm asking the unconventional ones you know clause one is property plant equipment intangible asset that i also know that you know but uh, let me see clause 14 b what is clause 14 caro yes clause 14 yes, i'll drink some water what do you think of the answer hmm internal audit that is clause 14 but my question is more specific 14 b kya hai non cash transaction is so clause 15 so not right yes 14 b whether the reports of the internal auditor for the period covered and covered under audit have they been considered by the statutory auditors and what is 14a whether the company has an internal audit system which is commensurate with the size and nature of its business right so clause 14 is regarding internal audit you know clause 14 is regarding the internal audit but 14a is regarding whether the company has an internal audit system which is commensurate with the size and nature of its business and 14b is regarding whether the reports of the internal auditor for the period under audit have they been considered by the statutory auditors right have they been considered by the statutory auditors right what is clause 17 of caro clause 17 let me see yes clause 17 of para 3 of caro 2020 right clause 17 of caro of caro 2020 clause 17 whether what whether yes whether the company has incurred any cash losses in the financial year and in the immediately preceding financial year you know whether the company has incurred any cash losses in the financial year and in the immediately preceding financial year now i will ask you the other way around which is the clause in caro for cost records which is the clause in caro regarding the cost records clause which is the clause in caro regarding the cost records clause clause yes six of the para three of the caro 2020 it is regarding the cost records it is regarding the cost records which is the clause in caro regarding fraud which is the clause in caro regarding fraud clause last one for today fraud which is the clause in caro regarding the fraud yes clause clause 11 of the para 3 of caro 2020 right which is regarding the fraud whether any fraud on the company or whether any fraud by the company has been noticed or reported during the year if yes then the nature and amount involved is to be indicated and then whether the fraud reporting has been done to the central government in ADT 4 and whether the auditor has considered the whistleblower complaints received by the company during the year right so what we try to have a discussion or a revision today was regarding one engagement letter audit report then after that we went to the 
uh, the RTP May 23, what questions, few questions like first four, five questions we saw over there and the correct and correct. Then after that, we did some 30 odd uh, MCQs over there. And uh, then after that, we came to just a quick uh, quiz regarding the Caro. Right. So with that, we end our session for today and tomorrow in the beginning of the class. So tomorrow and day after also for inter audit knockout series, we have 7.30 to 9.30, same timing. So in the beginning of the class itself, if you or you know you are on the telegram channel or any uh, through mail or so you can let me know any particular topic or anything that you would like to get incorporated in this particular discussion of ours right so i wish and i yes wish you all the very best and lots of success and lots of uh, what you say uh, right now perseverance right now for you to prepare for your exams right so see you all tomorrow have a wonderful evening and bye